Today, my guest is Veronica Davis, who is one half of Pod Sound School. You might be familiar with Pod Sound School from YouTube, where Veronica and her husband, Stephen, educate and inspire content creators, creative professionals, and business owners. In addition to Pod Sound School, they also host the Content Hefe podcast, where I was just recently a guest, which I'll link to in the show notes. Because Veronica is both in front of the camera making content and behind the scenes and inside their programs teaching students about marketing, I wanted to ask Veronica some questions around both of those. In this episode, Veronica and I talk about on the days that you're not particularly feeling inspired to create, how do you do it? And why is there such a growing interest among service providers to add podcast editing to their offerings? Also, we talk about what do future podcast editors need to know that will save them time and money? If you're a content creator or just interested in the world of podcast editing, you won't want to miss this conversation I have with Veronica Davis. This is the show for digital creators by digital creators. Hosted by me, Dylan Schmidt, a Los Angeles-based content creator who loves to blend marketing, creativity, and business. Join in as we explore online entrepreneurship, creator best practices, and more. Each week, I'll bring you interviews with successful creators, tips and tricks for growing your online presence, and simple insights into the latest trends and strategies I'm seeing and using in the space. Welcome to Digital Podcaster. Veronica, thank you so much for joining me on Digital Podcaster. I'm excited you're here today. I am so happy to be here. Excited to have this conversation with you. Do you mind sharing just briefly about yourself and your partner, Stephen, about what you two help people do? Stephen and I were married and we have three kids and we have a company. We started our company five years ago, the Pod Sound School. And uh, well, there are two sides to our business. We train creative professionals to be podcast editors. That's uh, one of the things that we included in our business a few months ago. We saw the need of just having good training uh, when it comes to podcast editing. And we decided to launch a coaching program. It's a 12-week coaching program that we train editors and we not only in with the audio skills, with the editing skills, but also with the marketing skills so they can start getting clients and they can build their own brand. So we do that. And we also help business owners to start their content marketing or to uh, include podcasting into their content marketing strategy that they're running. Also to generate more leads, to uh, get closer with their clients or to educate their existing clients too about things that they do with the business. So we have those two things. I'm from Colombia. I moved here in 2005. So it's been it's been a few years. I went to law school. I graduated from law school in 2016, started working at the district attorney's office, and I wanted to be a prosecutor. After I thought about it and discussed it with my husband, I decided that I didn't want to do that anymore. So we decided to start our company. And here we are. (laughs) Here we are. Your Honor, may I approach the bench? (laughs) (laughs) That was was nerve-wracking. That was... That seems extremely nerve-wracking. It almost makes creating content seem like eating candy or something because yeah, you know, it's nice to have that perspective, yeah. I'm sure. Yes. Yeah. It was really nice to, to have that experience. It's something that I used to see on TV and think like, Oh, how cool is that? But then I just, I was in court to, you know, minor violations and, and, and traffic tickets and, and DUIs. So I'm like, this isn't as glamorous as you see yeah. in the movies. <laughs> like I just, you know, I wanted to to save the world and you know i wanted to be an advocate for for victims and and seek justice and all that but that just it wasn't as glamorous and i didn't see myself in the future like doing that i was able to transfer some of the skills that i learned there to what we do and you know if somebody out there is listening or watching this and you're you know thinking about doing the switch about quitting your job about, you know, you're unfulfilled with your career. And you think like, I'm going to waste all of this, my experience, and I'm going to waste all of the the money that I have invested and my education. 
um, no, you're going to take the skills and, and the professional skills that you have learned, and then you're going to apply in on hopefully something that is going to bring you more fulfillment and it's going to make you happy and excited um, to do every day. And what aspects of content creation today bring you the most joy? Ooh, hmm, that's a good question. With content creation, it's been a love hate relationship. It's been very hard for me to be in front of the camera to make videos to just being so vulnerable. There's this like vulnerability that you have to go through when you you put yourself out there for other people to judge and to criticize and uh, but also like to make connections and to contribute to people. The thing that I enjoy the most is how it has taken me out of my comfort zone and how it has pushed me into being this person that sometimes I don't even recognize. Like I I watch my own videos and I'm like, girl, you look fine. Like, look at you all articulate. Like, look at you, like all confident. Like, you know, you're sharing your message. You're like changing people's lives you're doing it. So seeing my transformation and seeing how it's helped me with my confidence and with the way I articulate ideas and, you know, how how freaking cool that I can go online and see a body of work that I've done over the years. I, I think that's one of the things of content creation is like you can see your evolution as a professional. You can see your evolution as a human being. You can see your evolution as a business when you go back and you start watching your videos or listening to your podcast episodes from like three years ago. Right. Wouldn't you agree? A hundred percent. It's mind blowing because at the time it feels nerve wracking putting yourself out there and all the things you just said. And I am extra critical of myself in the moment. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, who would watch this? Oh, I don't want to even rewatch yeah. this video after I edited uh, it. I would. Yeah. I watch all of your videos. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. And then I post it and then I just kind of step away. But then a year later or something, I'm like, this was, this was great. Like, what was, why was I so hard on myself? It happens mm-hmm. every single time. It hasn't really gone away for me, but being a creator like yourself, who's on both sides of the camera, like you're in front of the camera, making the content. And then you're also inside of your programs. You're doing the marketing with your partner. You've got a lot going on behind the scenes. Which role is most fulfilling for you? Oh, I think that the role that I enjoy the most is to be an educator and to have that one-on-one contact with our students because when you make content for YouTube and when you make content, when you make a podcast, it's sort of like a one-way thing. So you're just, the way that you, that it happens is like you make your content and then the analytics will tell you, but then you have to wait for the analytics. It doesn't happen overnight. You have to like wait like three months, six months, a year to see if that piece of content uh, was embraced and enjoyed and all that with students is is right there is live you show up and you see their progress you see from the moment they started your program to the moment that they finish your program then you see the evolution you see the wins you see the hard times that they go through you see also the when it clicks so you see you get to experience that contribution like right there in the moment. And that's, it can, it gives you a lot of joy because it like, ultimately that's what we want. We want to feel like we are helping somebody to get over something, to, to help them find a way to help them find a solution, to take them to the next step, to be part of their hero's journey. The, the, the person who's there like, come on, you can do this. I mean, this is what you need and this is the skill you need. And then so ultimately can get to where they want to be. And that's fun and extremely rewarding. I always feel kind of bad for people that aren't in the education spot. Maybe they're just the content creator spot and they're helping people because, and they don't get to see the 
you know, faces on Zoom calls of people understanding something or directly working with people. If you're just giving out tips all day in videos, it's so different working with people live, you know, whether it's virtually or in person, there's something so satisfying and fulfilling about that versus I wonder if anyone, like, I know this video got saves and shares and views and comments, but you never really get to see much past that. Yeah. Yeah. You don't get to see people apply it or if it's working for them, you don't get to see any of that. And yeah, I think that's the part that I enjoy the most. Also, when it comes to creating content, I think that I enjoy this a lot. And it's funny because uh, we didn't do it for so long and now we are opening ourselves up to be an interview and to interview people on our podcast. And I think that there was some kind of fear. There was some kind of resistance that it came with just being interviewed or meet with other people. I think we're just like to focus on certain things. We forgot how fun it is just to sit down and meet people and get to talk to people and use your podcast to do that. And you were the first person that I interviewed for our podcast. And that was pretty fun. Like we had, I had a lot of fun. I don't know about you, but I- it was pretty good. No, it was awesome. I'm it was super, it's all about me. Super, <laughs> it was super fun. I had a blast being on your podcast. And if you haven't heard our episode together, I'll link it in the episode description, in the show notes. You know, there's some days where creating content is a part of my business and educating and inspiring is a part of my business. And the reality is like some days is harder than others to to just get in the mindset of what I'm doing. But I guess two questions is like, one, do you feel the same? And two, if you do, how do you get in the mindset on days that you're not particularly feeling inspired? That's a very good question. I'm one of those who wake up in the morning and don't feel like anything. I wake up and I'm like, why? <laughs> so I have developed a series of things uh, that, that I do so I can get rid of whatever is happening in my body. And this is that what I, I, I would tell you if, um, you know, if you, if you're like me, if you wake up and you just don't feel good, you're like hateful, then don't think that that's your personality. It, there's a lot of things happening in your body hormonally. So don't believe what's going on. Um, I work out. And also I try to meditate. And when I do that, then all of a sudden I'm open to creativity and I'm a better person. I'm a better creator. And the content that I make can connect. It's primed to connect with people because if I just jump out of bed and start planning my day and recording content, uh, either for our students or for our channel, then I know that that's not going to be a good experience. So I have to take care of my mental health and I have to take care of and do the things that will get me to the point where I'm okay, I'm ready and I feel great. So it doesn't have to be, you know, a three hour ordeal. So, and then by the time you start, like it's already noon, <laughs> it can be just a good, a good stretch it can be a quick walk in nature uh, if you have, you know, a nature in your proximity. It can be just to uh, breathe for, you know, five minutes in and out. It can be just having green juice, like whatever it is that is going to bring you so you feel good and you feel ready to create good things. Um, I have tried it before, like I have made content that is, I wasn't my best, that I wasn't feeling my best. And you can, you can see that it just doesn't perform as well. Would you agree with that? Like when you just have those moments and you just make the, you know, you're feeling goofy, you're feeling happy, you're feeling like connected. And then you just make those pieces of content that are really great. You know what? Yes, I would agree with that mentally. And for some reason, and I, I can't really explain this, some of my best performing content is content that I am like speaking in a specific way. And it wasn't maybe on purpose, but it doesn't seem representative of me and my personality. Just how I'm talking right now, like my voice is more kind of higher because I'm like excited to be talking with you. 
but in the videos mm-hmm. that like have the most views and have sustained success in the last couple of years, I'm talking like very down and I'm talking like this. I know. Of- and I'm like, why? Like, that's not my normal talking. And I, I did it on purpose usually in those videos. Like, oh, you did? Yeah. Like a couple of videos in particular where I like, I, I spoke like this uh-huh. and it was down and low. I think that that that's the the thing that you should go with the low voice, the low voice, and I think it, yeah, and, <laughs> it's and, harder and the for dark. Me. <laughs> it's harder because it's like energy wise. I'm just like this is like I have a video on TikTok that I posted a year year and a half ago, and it's like this is the easiest way to start a podcast, and in it I've, it doesn't feel even like me because I'm like this is the easiest way for you to start a podcast. But listen, so <laughs> you decided you decided that you just want to do it that way. I'm no. like, I'm just going to do it this way. I copied a, or, a real you estate feel- agent. I like, oh, I, okay. but he had, it wasn't anything about podcasting. I watched a video and I was like, I'm going to recreate that for podcasting as a test. <laughs> and so, like, I copied his tone of voice. So I watched it, and then like the inflections through the whole like 40 seconds, uh-huh. and I matched it. So like every line was matching his inflections, and it was like. And what you're going to do is go here. (laughs) And it's so unnatural, but it has like, it's like probably one of the results on Google. If you type in like how to start a podcast, it's probably one of the top results because every week it's like one of my top performing videos. Um, And it's that is so interesting. Yeah. So I do, but I do agree like with everything you say though, like around in the right headspace and how you show up, because I couldn't show up if I had to be like that consistently. It wouldn't Mm -hmm. be me. I'd be like, this is, uh, I'm boxed in because that's not my personality. So, and mm-hmm. then the headspace to even continue and the mindset. And the, so yes, a hundred percent. And I've on this podcast about a hundred plus episodes ago, I would record with people around the world and I just did whatever time they were cool with. So I did some episodes at like four thirty or five, my time. Mm-hmm. I had like literally woke up three minutes before started recording. Got out of bed. Oh, I, I was like, <laughs> I don't even know how I did it or or why I did it really, but it, <laughs> how awake could I have been, you know? And I, there's no way I was like my best <laughs> self at five minutes after waking up, you know? <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah. I, I love your videos and I love your style. Thank you. I really do. Thank you. I feel like uh, sometimes when you, you're you scrolling and you just get people like yelling at you, yeah. like, you know, like, ah, I am going to tell you why you're not yeah. selling your offers. It's very Man. jarring and I'm sensitive to sounds and stimuli, you know, on, on content mm-hmm. in general, just cause it's like in it all day. And I feel the same with you and the energy that's like radiated in the video. And maybe it's an energetic thing that is the reason why these, my voice talking in a certain way is there. Maybe it's like this confident tone, but I'm radiating something else that I'm not articulating mm-hmm. And your videos do the same. It's like there's a energy transference that doesn't make me feel like I got to run from this. I like, uh, yeah. can like enjoy it and I don't I feel Absolutely. smarter. <laughs> I feel smarter and better. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. I feel like, yeah, you just have this calm demeanor that is refreshing. Thank you. And it adds to your authority to like, listen, I don't have to yell at you. I don't have to like be all like in your face. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna speak calmly and directly, and yeah, that's that that's one of the things that I enjoy the most about your videos. Thank you, and it stresses <laughs> it stresses me out when I'm scrolling and someone's don't don't, 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 don't scroll don't scroll. It's like oh my gosh. Like, yes, I'm scro- like. <laughs> Does that work? Yeah. <laughs> like, so it's like so someone coming to your front door and just being like, oh, wait, 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 I see you in there. Like, don't, don't go. It's like. That's one of the, I would say the downside of being a content creator is that you have to be on the platforms and that it can affect your mental health. It can affect you and like in so many ways you go down the spiral of, like I'm doing everything is wrong about myself, my business, I'm dropping the ball, I'm behind. I should do this. I should reinvent everything. I should go into this, do that. It's just, it's, it's hard to be in this business and to keep that in check. And it's like, it's hard to realize in the moment. Like I have all this experience. I have all this knowledge. I have proof. Students 
business success, marketing experience, you've made the content. And, and I, I'll speak for myself. I know sometimes I'll be like, do I know that? Like as someone that uh-huh. has been doing it for less time with less experience, but it's the hook got me or something where I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. maybe I have no idea what I'm talking about for a split yeah. second. And that doubt is not healthy. And the algorithm can continually show things that yeah. seed that doubt and that's not good or comments that are not productive. And it's like, I would never allow that in my email inbox. I would unsubscribe or report it as spam, but for something like as unregulated, like I don't have any control over the algorithm. I can only control me actually looking at the content, you know? And it's yeah, hard. it is. It is. It's hard. I, Steven makes, makes fun of TikTok and because it feels like it's like we have all those people here in our house. And it's true. Like, you know, we're at, it's dinner time and then, you know, look at this and look at this. And it's like we have their energy. We have them like they're in our house having dinner with us. So, yeah, like setting boundaries around that. It's been uh, difficult. It's been a process. We hired a social media manager and that didn't work. So now I'm responsible for for the content again until we find another person to fulfill that role finding talent is really hard these days i feel like we're, we're having a hard time with that yeah and trustworthy you know like you trust mm-hmm. especially with your brand and, and your image and your livelihood like just to put that you can't just oh there's yeah there's a lot of people out there doing it but do you trust mm-hmm. them you know um, do you trust them yeah that's one reason why i love podcasts in particular as opposed to more social media is the slower pace of it it's not as yes. in your face i don't feel like i need a bath after an energetic bath afterwards, I opt into it. It's not just a random algorithm showing me, you know, stimulating mm-hmm. my brain where I just leave feeling like I am fried. I need a vacation. Mm-hmm. What was life like before phones? Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, and speaking on the the podcast front, why do you think there is a growing interest in more people wanting to become podcast editors? I would say like right now, like even though it seems like things have slowed down a little with the industry, I think there's still a lot of demand for good talent when it comes to podcast editing. And when it comes to podcast editing, there are two ways that I've seen. Maybe there's there are more ways that, that people get to into podcast editing and that's you know, they're audio engineers, either by they went to school or they trained themselves to be audio engineers. And then they have that background. So now like, oh, let's get into podcast editing and they get into podcast editing. And then there are other people who are, uh, you know, DIYers. They have learned how to edit with Audacity, uh, maybe by watching a few YouTube videos. And so there's not like an in-between kind of a thing where you don't have to spend a lot of money going to college and get to be an audio engineer, but also you don't have to train yourself with YouTube videos, which we know that YouTube videos can give you so much information and sometimes they're not updated and they're wrong. So then we created our program for the in-between, for the people who want to, they want to become podcast editors but they don't want to go to school and they don't want to do the DIY route. They want to get into a program where they can learn all of the skills that an audio professional needs to edit a podcast and also how to market themselves on Upwork and how to, how to find clients and all that. So we're very proud of our program, I think. Yeah, and so far, believe it or not, we've had women. Some of them are already doing podcast management, but they want to include podcast editing as part of their packages. And some of them have told us like how there are different programs for podcast managers, but in those programs, they teach podcast editing, but they don't go into the depth that is necessary to professionally edit a podcast and maybe work for a network, for a podcast network, or just get high paying clients. You know, talking about the podcast industry, I I think that, you know, 2020 happened, there were a lot of people getting into podcasting. And a lot of people using Anchor, I don't know how many millions of podcasts are right now on the podcast directories. And I feel like we're 
were responsible for half of those for that video that we posted on YouTube that has almost a million views. That's incredible. <laughs> How to start a podcast with Anchor. Uh, <laughs> so a lot of people started podcasts uh, that way. And it's easy, like when you don't have a skin in the game, when you are not invested, when you start a podcast, just, you know, well, let's just start a podcast right now. There's no thought, no planning, no no goals, no no strategy. Then you, those are the podcasts that you've seen going away and vanish. And now there, you see a lot of older podcasts like coming into the picture. Like those are the the ones that will stay. The, the ones that are well produced, well planned, have a goal and talent behind the production. That was a long answer. No, that's a thorough answer, I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> and what what are some of the common challenges that people who are getting into podcast editing encounter? Whether you're a podcaster, TikToker, Instagrammer, YouTuber, an artist, or just a person who makes stuff and shares it online, and you're maybe a little tired of doing things solo, I'm inviting you to join us in the Creator Club. The Creator Club is made up of individuals who all have a similar goal, make an impact. We have weekly live calls, topic-focused discussions, areas for feedback, templates and resources to help you grow. You can try the club out for seven days free right now by visiting www.thecreatorclub.com or just look in the show notes of this episode. Join the Creator Club today. Hmm. I think like in everything we do as humans, like the biggest challenge is to believe in themselves and get that first client. I think that's nerve wracking for some people. I think that just creates a feelings of discomfort of, you know, am I, am I going to be able to pull this through? All of that. So I think that the biggest challenge is that just to get students to get that first client experience and to keep the momentum going, bring in more clients. I think that's the biggest thing that they, they're up against. And do you cover that uh, uh, as far as like the getting clients part? Because I know you do the, or Stephen teaches more like the technical aspects, right? Mm -hmm, yeah. So he does the technical aspect of the program. They start with Stephen the first four weeks. Week five, six, and seven, they spend with me working on their marketing message, also working on their website, working on uh, getting them app work, and just help them, teaching them how to articulate their value. Because uh, I think that's one of the things that I've seen like across the board. Editors don't know how to articulate their value and what they do for a podcast, for shows. So uh, that's one of my goals. Like you're not going to walk out of this program without knowing how to articulate your value, because if they know, then it will be easy for them to charge what they deserve instead of, oh, I'm just a podcast editor. That's something that I see missing from so many programs. And it kind of bugs me because they might have this huge promise of, you know, I'll teach you how to edit podcasts. And it's like, cool, but it's part of the skill, right? There's like more skills needed based on the promise that they might be making on the sales page. And that's something that has always drawn me to both you and Steven, that it's a full approach to it. You know, there's not, mm -hmm. it's not empty at the end of it. And I'm like, well, great. And you're on your own. Good luck getting clients or whatever. Own. Maybe here's a book I read, mm -hmm. you know, some other like yeah. <laughs> empty promise, maybe, I don't know, whatever you figure it out. You know how to edit it. That's mm -hmm. all I do. And the fact that you incorporate the marketing in there, I absolutely love it. It makes it like mm -hmm. full, you know? Yeah. Yeah. We're teaching them the things that we wish that uh, somebody have taught us when we started which is the the importance of articulating your value, not in the sense of what you do or the work that you perform, but in the sense of the value that your client receives. For example, if somebody is looking for an editor, then that person, they have more money than time and they need uh, the talent so they can keep producing their podcast. But the podcast is not just it. 
the podcast is just part, maybe it's part of their marketing campaign, part, part of their marketing strategy. And so now the editor is not only editing a podcast, it's just freeing mental space and freeing time for this person to do all their things that will generate more leads and more uh, sales for their business. So if you learn like the important role that you have as a podcast editor, and if you learn how to articulate it, then people will understand it instead of like, oh, I know how to uh, apply compression and EQ and yeah, I don't understand any of that. Could you explain to me, like, you know, what's the what what's the contribution? Like, what what are you gonna do for my, my show? Like, how is it gonna sound? Like, what are the things that I'll be able to do with it? How how is it gonna make me feel having a podcast that sounds so good? So you, all of a sudden, then, oh, okay, then you're speaking my language. Then they are speaking the language of their prospects instead of their technical language. And that's important. I think that's the disconnection between editors and not only podcast editors, video editors, is, is the disconnection in the language and how they articulate their value. Do you just know that so well? I am going to clip that and just, I run into people, editors, and not just like people, podcast editors, but just people that work in like a service-based industry in general. And, you know, it's like, I'm having one conversation in expressing my needs and they're talking about something completely different. And I know mm -hmm. that they want to help me, but I know mm -hmm. also that we're not even meeting at the same conversation point. They are thinking this and I'm thinking this, and mm -hmm. I'm not feeling like they're going to meet my needs. If, you know, it's like, if I was, mm -hmm asking someone out and I'm like, Hey, do you want to go to dinner? And they're like, what's your favorite color? And it's like, you know, here's my mm -hmm. favorite. I'm like, well, I don't think we're going to yeah, be there's the, <laughs> Yeah. There's the, there's the disconnection and, and also how do you justify your price? Yeah. Because if I tell you, yeah, I edit, I'll, I'll edit your podcast. I apply this and this effects and remove the arms and ahs. And then you're like, okay, well that sounds like a $50 an hour thing. But if I tell you like something, something completely different, like I take your raw files and turn them into this audio experience that your audience can get enough of, they have to keep coming back because that's how good your podcast is going to sound. Like you don't have to worry about, am I doing the right thing? Like, am I editing my podcast the right thing? Does it have the right levels? Are people enjoying it? Like, is this... You don't have to worry about that because the only thing that you need to do is just to send me your raw files and then I'll be able to transform those into this experience that will help you like feel more confident about reaching out for sponsors or guests or, you know, whoever. And I guess it's one of those things that, I, that it took us a while for us to articulate our own value. But when we did, it was a total different game for us. It was an aha moment that we were like, oh man, we were just like selling ourselves so cheap. Thinking in terms of the work that we were doing and not the value that we were providing. What advice would you have for individuals who are thinking about offering something like podcast editing to a service uh, as a standalone service? Any advice mm -hmm. for individuals thinking about adding podcast editing? So my first well, we already talked about articulating your value. That's super important. And then uh, the other thing that I would recommend is to have a social media presence uh, to create a, a brand around your services. It's important as an editor, whether it's a video editor, an audio editor, whether you're on Upwork or you are just pursuing your own clients, you know, your own way. And um, here's the thing, like we hire uh, editors all the time for different projects for ourselves and for clients. And what we do when somebody applied on Upwork, like even though they have their profile there and we, we like to see if they are on social media, we like to see if they have a website, like how professional does the website look. Also, like how professional do they look on Upwork? So just creating a brand 
and just make sure that your brand reflects your personality and also how your experience and I don't even know how to describe like I've seen things that I'm like why like I, I have faith in you and then I went and <laughs> and look at your social media and all of a sudden it's just so pay attention to those things because people will look you up on social media and they will uh, look at your website and if it's not cohesive if it doesn't represent who you are if it's not doesn't represent your brand then tweak it make it nice and add your value, articulate your value and just put it on your website and on your Upwork account or whatever it is that you're getting your leads from. That's important. Wonderful. And mm -hmm. for people interested in working more with you and Stephen, how can they do so? Um, you can go to our website, uh, podsoundschool.com. And there we have all of the information um, about uh, different things that we have going on throughout the year. We have different programs. Like right now we are po with podcasts at a lab. And uh, we're also working on putting together a podcasting program. I think we want it to be a coaching program just because of what I told you that that one on one with our students. We're excited about that one. That was the first program that we launched back in 2019. And we paused it the beginning of this year because it was getting old. We needed to be updated. We're going back to it and it's going to be super fun. We're putting all, all of our creative energy into it. <laughs> nice, nice. Awesome. I'm looking forward to, to watching you roll out that one. Thank you so much for joining me today, Veronica. Yeah, thank you. This has been a lot of fun. It's always fun to to talk to you. Same. <laughs>